Welcome to the Breakaway Entrepreneur Podcast, where master business coach Janet Fish and her special guests explore the characteristics and traits that lead entrepreneurs to success. Get ready for real conversations of what it takes to overcome real challenges and break away from your competition. Here's your host, Janet Fish. Thanks, Ben. If you've ever thought about starting a podcast, you're going to get your money's worth out of this episode. Adam is an amazing podcaster whose passion is to help people love their show like a hobby, however, build it like a business. I personally got some unbelievable tips out of this episode, not only for my podcast, but also for growing my business. Adam is also going to be a presenter at my upcoming virtual summit called Breakthrough Your Profit Ceiling. It's coming March 24th. We will go deeper into how to use your podcast to build your community. I hope to see you there. Enjoy the episode. All right. We are rocking and rolling. Okay, Breakaway Entrepreneurs, good morning. I am super excited about today. Now, I always say I'm super excited about my guests because I always am, but today I'm like super duper excited. So Adam, welcome to the show. Well, Janet, I am very excited to be here as well. Like We've connected quite a bit. I feed off your energy. I know you feed off my energy. So I think that your audience is going to get their money's worth today. I have no doubt about it. Let me tell them a little bit about you because I got your little bio here and I want to do you justice. Adam is a full-time podcaster, podcasting growth coach, and the host of Podcasting Business School. Adam's goal is to teach his students how they can love their show like a hobby, but build it like a business. Adam specializes in the topics of podcast download growth, podcast monetization, audience engagement, and Instagram for podcasters. And we are going to talk about all of those today. But I want to start out with, like, how did you get into podcasting? I know you've been in it for a while. I know you have a number of shows. Tell us how you got into this crazy world of podcast. Yeah, being a full-on podcast addict at this point. Uh, So my first show was spurred along by my physical transformation, my, my weight loss journey. So the story goes back in 2007, I weighed 327 pounds. I went on a journey where I ended up losing over a hundred pounds. Uh, I created a business out of that. That, that, that was like the, the 2007, 2008, 2009, that's when boot camp fitness was going crazy. Uh, so I created a little boot camp. And as I lost my 100 pounds, I helped uh, 15 other people in my hometown lose 100 pounds. I ended up helping my hometown lose 35,000 pounds total. And we were crushing it business-wise. And everybody's in my ear going, franchise, franchise. And I'm like, I really don't want all that responsibility. And I really don't like the idea of being in charge of a whole lot of people. I do like the idea of bigger impact. So eventually, I I caught wind of the... uh, the, the world of podcasting. I was like, oh, I'm going to start a weight loss show and teach everything that I know and you know, do coaching and bring experts on. So that's where Million Pound Mission was launched. And the goal was to you know, help people along in their, their weight loss journey. We tracked the results. People would listen to the show. They go on the website. They donate their weight loss to the Million Pound Mission. And we had a little tracker thing. Um, and that was my initial like first three and a half years of podcasting was just health, weight loss, million pound mission. Now, at that point, I'm getting a lot of my friends, like I'm speaking on stages at podcasting events. Uh, I've got a lot of my friends, I'm getting known for my Instagram ninja maneuvers. And they're like, how can I hire you as a coach? How can I hire you as a consultant? Can you help me with my podcast? Can you help me grow a business around my podcast? And I'm like, Ooh, I would love all of these things, please. I remember, I remember the first time I spoke at PodFest. I get up there and really it was like my first time, like doing an actual presentation on a stage <laughs> that wasn't like a fitness thing. So I was like, Oh, I was pretty nervous, but I crushed it. And everybody's like, I want to hire you as my coach. I want to buy your course. And I was like, I have none of these things. I guess ready. I better go create a course. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, Oh, and so that's when I started creating shows around business. Um, I, I created podcasting business school, that whole brand eventually. Um, and that's where that, kind of turn was was birthed. And now as of the end of 2019, I sold my gym. Uh, I'm, and I'm a full-time podcaster and and a full-time, you know, online marketer, entrepreneur, coach, consultant, uh, builder, builder of legends, uh, you know, all those things. Um, but it's, it's, I never would have thought 
back in 2007 that I would be doing what I'm doing today. Like there's, there's zero chance, but I'm having a blast at doing it. Yeah. And so you were, you owned a gym or you worked at a gym before you became a podcaster. And it's just, just fascinating to me because I'm very early on my podcaster journey and I don't know where the heck it's going, but I know it's going to places that I can't even imagine. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. So, uh, we'll just start with the basics. Okay. Um, why would people start a podcast and uh, how should they start a podcast? Like give them some of the best practices so they can save years or months uh, in starting a podcast because you know all that stuff. Well, if you're in business of any sort, brick and mortar or online, especially like to me, the podcast is our last standing pillar of communication with a hundred percent deliverability other than talking to somebody face to face. And what I mean by that is if Janet and I are in business together and 80% of our people on our email list don't open it, we're still high-fiving each other like, yes, 20% open email rate. That's amazing. Or if we put up a Facebook post and 10% of our people comment, whoa, you know, high-five. That's amazing. But here's the thing about podcasts. If someone hits subscribe on my show, it shows up every single Tuesday and Thursday on their phone every single time. It always shows up 100% deliverability. So that's like, that's unheard of in the space of people that are building brands, building audiences, marketing, wanting to nurture the relationship with their audience, um, audience engagement wise, like it's gold. I'm in their earbuds every Tuesday, every Thursday. I know Janet listens to my show. Like she's always commenting and she's like, great episode. Um, so that well, doesn't it, happen with email or social media. And, 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 I, and I'll just share that that's why I got into podcasting because um, I was doing a blog and I couldn't write another blog. It's like, there is no way I'm writing another blog. <laughs> and somebody said to me, think about um, starting a podcast. So I went and did a whole bunch of research. And the thing that got me to a absolute hell yes is it's a very different way of communicating, like you just said. So people read stuff, but they don't hear you right? When you are doing a podcast episode, and I've started doing more solo episodes versus interview episodes, Good. and that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, but they hear me. And it's a way to get into someone's and get to know people in a way that you can't do it through print. Uh, you can't even do it through just doing it. I mean, you can do it a little bit through video and just having some videos out there. But you're right. I mean, we all have listeners on Monday, I do Monday, Monday, I get a spike. Like yeah. people wait for the show to be done, to be dropped and then they start listening to it. So everyone should have, anyone in business should have a podcast, right? Yeah, they should think about it and it's not that hard to pull off and it's, it's, you know, very, very doable. One of the big mistakes people make early on is just not starting. Podcrastination is what it's called. Uh, they, they've got the great idea. They've been thinking about it for, you know, several years and, and they know that they'll have an audience or, or their current audience will love it and they just never get started. Um, I had, I was talking to somebody that they had 40 something interviews recorded, hadn't put anything and submitted it and put it together and submitted it yet because survey says they didn't like the image that they had, like the, the show art oh. image, <laughs> like for two years, they've been podcasting with 40 plus episodes for two years, not released an episode because they don't like their show art. That's ridiculous. So we got to get it out there. Everybody's first few episodes kind of stink and it's, that's just no big deal. You, you, but you'll pick up quick. Now, the other mistake that people make is they go too broad. I'm a huge fan of the niche and digging in like my show isn't called entrepreneurship and it's not called, you know, money for everyone. It's called podcasting business school. So this is for podcasters that are interested in building a business around their show. That's like a double layer of, of niching down. You don't want to be one of those shows. And this, this is my big like comedic line that, that I'm, I'm using now. So get ready for it, Janet. You don't want to be one of those shows. That's like that really broad niche. It's like, this is for thinkers, thought leaders and thinkers who thought they were leaders. Like it's, that's like, it's too broad and you don't want to be in that space. So don't fear the niche. A lot of people are like, well, I'm going to, if I have a show that's like, entrepreneurship for, for moms. Like I just saw a show. It's like the mompreneur boot camp or something I'm like that's awesome. And you don't go, Oh, but I'm excluding all the dads. Well, the dads aren't your audience. Like if you want to work with moms that are entrepreneurs, the mompreneur boot camp, that's kind of your jam. So 
get started. Don't fear the niche. I think if you can take care of those two points, you're off to a great start. So, and let me add a third, uh, which you wouldn't say, but I absolutely would say is go work with somebody who's a podcaster. Like you and I are both in a mastermind about podcasting. We spent a whole lot of money to be in this mastermind about podcasting. Like go to an Adam and say, hey, I, wanted, I want the fast track, right? Because yeah. I didn't actually join a, a business school um, until... I think I was 10 months into my podcasting. I just, I'm like, I'm 13 months into it, right? Yeah. I didn't actually get get help at all for 10 months. And as soon as I got help, I could have cut off six months. Like I could have superseded <laughs> yeah. my speed of what I'm doing now by six months working with someone like you. So like my recommendation, like I'm a coach, everyone should have a coach. If I want to do a podcast and I want to start a podcast, hire somebody like Adam, get Adam's brain on it because you will just, you'll go so fast. And so let's talk about the next topic because I'm just going to follow what you told like what you're specializing in. And so let's talk about what we all talk about as podcasters. And it's so funny because we always say don't focus on the downloads, but we focus on the downloads, yeah. right? So talk a little bit about not only how to get more downloads, but when you talk about a niche, like we don't want a thousand downloads, but people who are never going to buy our stuff. We want a hundred downloads every week or whatever that number is that are people that are going to buy what we have. And so yeah. talk a little bit about that and some strategies to get there. Well, I think it's, to me, it starts with the offer that you want to present to your ideal potential listener. That could be your ideal potential client. So if you've got a coaching service, like I've got a podcast marketing agency that I'm doing now. Like I help people grow, podcasters grow their show. I do platform build outs where I can build, you know, online courses. I can build lead magnets. I can build all that stuff. So those are like my offers. And I go, okay, who are these great for? What types of pain points do they have? Uh, and let's reverse engineer the whole show and the whole process along those lines. And like, that's how I go about connecting the dots from downloads to dollars. So once I think you have to build that, at least have an idea of your, your ideal client journey first, and then you fine tune it as you go. You're a lot of interaction points. You're getting feedback. You're like, Ooh, I need to change this or, you know, adjust that approach. And again, that's where coaching comes in. Um, but when it comes to just like, let's get people pumping through the system. Now we've got a system. Let's get as many downloads as possible. There are all sorts of exciting things that you can do as a podcast. Like the biggest one is if you can get booked on shows in your niche with people that are listening to that show, like every single week, that could be great listeners for your show. Um, that is like one of the best ways. So obviously, there are probably a lot. There are obviously a lot of entrepreneurs in, in your in your audience, but there may be some people that are, are podcasters or pod curious, whatever they are, and maybe they'll come on and check out what I have to say on my show. So this is a great opportunity. I'm doing a lot with ads right now on podcast players. That's like what my whole podcast marketing agency platform is based off of. And not a lot of podcasters are doing this. And uh, each platform is a little bit different. And I'm running banner ads in my category. So I have a health show called Low Carb Hustle. And I'll run a banner ad on like the overcast.fm platform in the health category. So these are health minded people listening to health-based podcasts and there goes my show banner boom popping up the next time that they're logging in they click on that they hit subscribe and that platform tracks all my subscribers uh, i'm doing a lot on spotify running ads uh, I, I put my voice to work i do a little voice ad on spotify like hey pod pals it's your buddy adam from podcasting business school you can listen right here on spotify click the banner below blah 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 um so that's that's working really well but can like, I, can I, I want to interrupt yes, you for a go second for it. because I want to go back to something that you said that is brilliant. And I would submit that 90% of podcasters don't do it. And I didn't do it until I met these smart people who are now telling me like how, so most of us, um, we create a podcast and then we just do it. Like I, I, I find people to interview and I interview them and I, you know, I have a theme and I have what, I, you know, kind of, but I just do it. And it's only now, and you just talked about it, 
put together a production schedule that leads people to a place yep. that grows your business, right? Yep. I mean, I love the ads and all of that, and I'm gonna we're gonna explore that a little bit. My, probably not here, but you and me are gonna explore it because I want to pick <laughs> your brain on that because um, that's an area I'd like to get into. But just to have a have a direction, right? Yep. Have a way yep. to take to, a place to take them. Have strategy around the podcast rather than just getting out there and every week submitting, you know, or, or, or drop in an episode like yeah. most, in your, I'm sure in your experience, the people that you're working with, no, I mean, people don't even think about that. Like, yeah, we've got to think about, I guess we should first let's quit thinking about our podcast, like a social media post. It's like when you put on an episode, it's not like when you post something on Instagram, it's not, it's not the same thing. If you do it right, your podcast can be a funnel. And like I call it the, the community to client bridge. Like you are building and nurturing this relationship. And like, I mean, if you want, I can kind of break down my, my bridge if you want, just like it in simple terms. So uh, my ideal person that's listening could, you know, very easily become an ideal and really good client for me at, at the back end. Or maybe they're a super fan and they tell 20 people they know to come listen to my show. That's awesome too. Or maybe they show up to my free stuff and add a lot of energy. Awesome also. So it's not like, I don't feel like I'm losing if I don't have 100% you know, <laughs> community to client conversion rate. That's not going to happen, but the bills are getting paid. That's the key. Um, so I put out episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. So, and I, so on each podcast, so you do two shows no, for Let's three just talk podcasts. about, yeah, just podcasting business school. This, okay, is, okay. this, is, my, this is my customer journey for, for podcasting business school. So uh, I put out episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Every other week, I, my, I sponsor my shows, uh, with my own stuff. So every other week I'm talking about my pod pal zoom party. This is a monthly gathering that I call a community lead magnet. And anybody could do this. I feel like if you have tuned out to me blabbing on and on here about business, tune back in for this part, because even if you don't have a podcast, this is the golden nugget of the episode right here. This is my number one tip for 2020, 2021, build a community-based lead magnet. So what I do every other week, uh, I do a pod pal Zoom party and I don't call it a Zoom meeting because Zoom meetings suck. Zoom parties are way funner. Uh, so uh, we've been through enough Zoom meetings. No, nobody needs any more of those. So I create an event every other week for my ideal listener to start that journey towards possibly becoming an ideal client. And I teach for five to seven minutes. Then I have the irresistible draw that brings every podcaster in. So that's the, the key question is what is the irresistible reason that your audience or people from your platform will want to attend every single time? For me, podcasters want to get booked on other podcaster shows. So people show up every two weeks because we do interview swaps. Everybody gets to talk. They get to say what their show is about, who they're looking for to interview, who they're a great speaker for. And everybody gets booked on shows. It happens every time. It's awesome. And they walk away with really great value. So that's the first like stepping stone towards becoming a, uh, an engaged community member slash eventual client. Then I do follow-ups and I actually have a, uh, an, a, a, um, it's not a, I have a few questions when people are, are signing up for the pod pal zoom party, they're giving me their email address. So it's a lead magnet. Now they're on my email list. So that's a part of the, the system, but now I'm asking them questions. Like I have a service called the, uh, the download growth club, which is a membership. And I'll say name, email, would you like a free month trial inside the download growth club? So that's a part of that before they even join the pod pal zoom party, they can opt in and go, yeah, I'd like to try that out and I'll kick him a, a free month. Then we do the pod pal zoom party. Uh, I have my CRM where I track everybody that's been in there and I do follow-ups and I would be like, Hey, let's, I'd love to have you uh, do some one-on-one -on -one time. And I'll invite them on for a one-on-one -on -one interview uh, as a podcast audit. So it's like a free coaching session. We record it, put it out as an episode of the show. And in that they're filling out an application where they're telling me their pain points. Like if I could only learn how to build an online course, I'd be great or I'm really trying to figure out how to, I basically ask them all the questions that I can solve. You know what I'm saying? And then they come in and we do the interview. I deliver value. I put that out as an episode. And guess what? I sponsored that episode with my link to sign up for a podcast audit. So that self fills that part of the funnel. And then I deliver value. Then we talk about what they, their pain points were, how I can help solve those. 
And a lot of those people move into the client status after two really good touch points, a lot of information gathered. I know exactly who they are. I know exactly what their pain points are. We spent an hour and a half, an hour 45 together in group and one-on-one format. And uh, a lot of those people, they, they convert to clients. And it's not like this hands-off, like email funnel tech thing. I'm not good at that. I'm good at this. So that, <laughs> that's uh, I'm good at building relationships and, and building momentum towards that endpoint of the journey. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. And let's face it. I mean, we all do email to try to get face to face, even if face to face is on the phone or via Zoom these yep. days. I mean, so you're just cutting to the chase. Like, I, and I'm a I'm a huge pod pal. I'm on every single one of them, and I can't tell you I'm booked on shows, and I've booked people on my shows from yeah. from the pod pal. So it's definitely absolutely worthwhile. And I and I love that idea. I'm going to steal that idea, and I'm going to start doing some of that same stuff in my world because I think my people need what I have too, and I can expand my. my my reach, just implementing some of the things that you talked about. And you don't have to be a podcaster to do that. Like we are raving no. podcasting crazy people. But if if you're just a coach or you're just, I mean, you're really selling coaching for podcasting, but yep. yeah, it doesn't, that, that doesn't necessarily matter. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, the next step in this whole podcasting world, everyone talks about monetization. And so what you've just talked about is what I'll call a guest to client strategy, or how do you get people that are coming on your shows and getting them to be clients? What are some of the other ways that you monetize your podcast? You mentioned sponsorships and some other, but what are some of the ways that you monetize your, your, uh, your podcast? Well, I've done live events. I've sold courses, coaching, um, uh, boot camps. Uh, sponsors like that's it's funny because people come into the podcasting game and you know this as well as I do Janet like they have this expectation that we start a podcast and then the underwear and mattress companies start paying us ads like like, that's just what happens that's what I see all my favorite podcasters do they all do the underwear ads and the mattress companies and that doesn't happen I'm like what I can't even get a mushroom company uh, mushroom coffee company to call me and pay me Uh, so that's a little bit disappointing at first, but like I went in reverse order. I'm like, well, I can make five cents a month selling mushroom coffee, or I can sell a thousand dollar course. That's exactly what I was just thinking. Like, <laughs> you know, why would I? Uh, why, I mean, and once they buy your thousand dollar course or their your two hundred dollar course, now they love you and they want the next thing, and you're in yep. the funnel, right? Yep. Whereas mushroom coffee or some of the other crazy things we won't talk about that you're selling on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. You know, to me, I, I, that's great. But one, it's way too hard. And way, two, it's way too little money. Like, I, yeah. I don't want to. And and I'm at the whim of them deciding they no longer want to sponsor my show. I mean, Correct. I've I've been successful having people coming on my shows that have been on my shows, sponsoring my shows because they know me and, and all that. But I'm w- with you. I'd much rather sell a, a, a coaching program or a course that gets them into some of my higher ticket items than to yeah. sell them a mattress or or underwear. I, yeah. I haven't necessarily seen the underwear one, but um, yeah. Um, all right. So I'm, I don't want to take up way too much of your time because you know, I could talk to you forever. But the last thing I want to chat about is um, Instagram podcasting for Instagram. You have been so I'll just tell you my little quick story. It was, I don't know, six months ago or four months ago. And I was out, you know, I love to play golf or if anybody knows follows me. I play golf. And I was out there with my sister and my niece. And my niece is like 35 years old. And we're sitting out there after playing, having a beer. And she had her phone out. And she's like doing some Instagram story. And I'm like, well, I'm on Instagram, but I don't know what. And she's like, come on, Aunt Janet. And so she's like, Instagram is where your peeps are. And I'm like, okay. So that was when I started doing some really mediocre Instagram stuff. Um, but now I'm committed to, I try five days a week, but if I do four, I'm really congratulating myself, but I'm doing some really interesting, cool stuff that I've learned from Adam, the Instagram master. So talk a little bit about, and maybe it's not just Instagram, but social media and, and, um, and podcasting and how to promote out on those platforms. Well, like when it comes to social, social media, one of my like public service announcements I like to put out there for podcasters is you don't have to be everywhere. You want to be on one to two platforms that you feel like your people are hanging out at. So if that's Clubhouse, be on Clubhouse. If that's Twitter, be on Twitter, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, Instagram, Instagram. My people are on Instagram and I'm well-versed in the language of Instagram. So that's why I hang out there 
in the first place. And as you get started, you have to feel it out. But when you start to get engagement and you start to be like, ooh, this platform is a lot easier and more time effective than these other ones, then move all your your apples to that cart. So um, with Instagram, like I love being there because it's there are so many ways to communicate on that one single platform. Like you've got the posts, you've got Instagram TV, you got Instagram stories, Instagram live, Instagram reels. And they always like with Facebook and Instagram, especially they tend to be like that social media death star. And they start absorbing all these new ideas that come from other, like Instagram stories wasn't a thing. Snapchat gets huge. Facebook tries to buy Snapchat. They say no. And they go, okay, we're creating Instagram stories. (laughs) And then like, you know, people, are like uh, at first like, Oh, Snapchat will be here forever. And like, I don't hear as near as many people talking about Snapchat that aren't like 12 years old. Um, And it aren't real, real TikTok for Instagram. Yes, exactly. And now clubhouse is going nuts. Instagram is going to create Instagram rooms. And and like, that's like going to be a thing and it's going to be the clubhouse on the Instagram platform. So, um, that's some people see that, that as a negative, but I'm like, I speak Instagram really well. I've got an engaged audience on there. So I just kind of sit tight and use that. But anything that on any social media platform that is new, that new equals algorithm and algorithm love and algorithm leverage. That's why uh, I've been, you know, coaching Janet along and I know she, she did my, my IG reels course. I'm like, it doesn't matter if it's good, bad, ugly, amazing, terrible, just put it through the reels mechanism and you'll get way more views on it than anything else because they want more people doing those. Cause it's brand new. Like when Facebook live first started, you would get giant uh, push and giant engagement just because nobody, everybody was scared to turn their phone and go live on the internet. And now it's like, it happens all the time. So they don't have as much algorithm love, but uh, anytime something new pops out on Instagram, I'm like, all right, I got to figure this out. I got to get active on it because the algorithm love, it seems like there's a giant like six to nine month push and then it starts to dwindle back into the normal, uh, like equal with the rest of the platform. Does that make sense? No, and, and it's great. I'm right there with you. I So I look at my, because reels are the thing, reels are real. Um, and, and I have a couple of reels, like one reel had in, in a day had 2,400 engagements. I'm like, and, and my regular posts have like 30 if I'm lucky, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so, crazy. And they're fun to do. Um, I'm a, so I... Like I struggle with, I think my people are on LinkedIn, right? But LinkedIn is such a difficult platform to gain traction in, I think. It's really hard to engage in in LinkedIn. And I think LinkedIn is just sleepy boring. Like I'm not, I go on there, I force myself to go on there and I'm like, there's nothing here that engages me that I'm interested in. Where Instagram, I'm sure I've got peeps out on Instagram and, um, and it's just a fun, fun, fun platform. And so, like I said, and you've inspired me to do a lot of crazy things out there. So I'll just keep doing that. All right. So any last uh, thoughts for people who who are podcasters but want to take it to the next level? Like, I want to lead them to you. Like, why would they? I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll say it. Why struggle doing it yourself? And not even realizing how you can monetize it through your, you know, monetize your business through a podcast yeah. versus monetizing a podcast. Like for me, there's no smarter thing. Like go figure out what Adam's got and buy it. But what are you? What are your thoughts as far as uh, what someone should do who are is considering a podcast or actually has one and they're not monetizing it? Well, if you are considering, or if you have one, they have to think about like maybe you have a brick and mortar business that you could use to promote that or if you have any online assets, the thing about podcasting, Janet, is that people will pay, like, let's say you have zero platform, zero, you don't have a thing. People will still pay for access. All right. And it can, I was just talking to a, a comedian from London, England uh, on one of my interviews. And I said, bro, like people will pay for access to you and they'll pay for access to your guests. Here's what I want you to do. I kind of use the pod pal zoom, zoom party format. I said, host a weekly get together. And I, what I want you to do is have like a stand up comedy night. And he has all these comics on his show. Uh, I'm like, bring them in. We do a little round table It brings some people out of the audience, allow them to, to practice their, their comedy. People will pay for that, or at least they'll give you their email address for, you know, and build a list. And maybe when you're doing a tour and you have live shows, those people are coming to see you live. Or if you do a virtual event, they're paying for that. 
but people will pay for access. They will give you their email address at a minimum for access. So think about how you could do that and leverage your knowledge and your guest experience. Like it's, if you do interviews, you can put that behind an email wall or a paywall where you get this, the bonus interview or the, 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 you know, 20 person Q and a session and you charge $20 a head to get in. You make 400 bucks every time you do that. Like a lot of people that's paying for their podcasting habits. So if you have zero start there, uh, but if you have a business, use your business or your platform to sponsor your show. Don't mess around with ads. Like I do ads on my health show, but that's a whole different thing. But my, my bread and butter on podcasting business school, you will never hear me read an ad on that. And people ask me all the time, like, Hey, do an ad. I'm like, it's not worth it. Like you can't pay me enough to take that space and not. And most of the time I'm, I'm just getting people in my funnel. I'm not saying like buy this course or that yeah. service. It's just like, get into my world and let's go on a journey together. Well, and that's what I have found. That's why I'm doing more solo episodes versus doing a lot of interviews is because, um, and I'm doing my own ads now too. And it's amazing how much they're converting to, I'm getting email addresses like up the yin yang, which I, I never did before I, or they trickled in before. So it's just so important to like make the podcast a marketing arm of your business, not the business, something that's really unrelated to your, to your podcasting. Yep. Cause podcasting is, you know, you gotta be consistent at, it and it's super fun, but it can be really, really, really beneficial to your, um, mm. to your business. Okay. So where should people go to connect with you? Should they go to podcasting business com? Where should they go to get all of your cool, cool stuff? Yeah. The, the URL, it's a unique one. It's podcasting business dot school. So I have a dot school URL. So podcasting business dot school, uh, if you want to come to my next pod pal zoom party, the link is right there at the top of the page. It's very simple. I've got like two buttons you can hit and then I got a video. <laughs> so, and awesome. any button that you touch will provide free value. <laughs> so that's, that's a good thing. So yeah, check it out. Podcasting All right. And then I'm also going to put a link below to your, to follow you on Instagram, because if you're interested in like all of those cool things that you do on Instagram with your reels, go check out his reels. They're amazing. Thank you, Adam. It was so great chatting with you today. I could do this for hours, but it's really good. I'm glad you shared some unbelievable thoughts with our audience. Thank you, Jan. I had a blast. And all you out there, make sure you leave a five-star rating and review on this show and mention this episode as your all-time favorite. That would mean the most to me. All right. Listen to you. Great. Shameless plug. I love that about you, Adam. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the Breakaway Entrepreneur Podcast. If you like the show, please rate, recommend, and review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts so we can share more actionable insights with the entrepreneur community. Until next time, challenge your mindset, be bold, take action, and financial freedom will follow. You can get helpful resources and templates to guide and inspire you from Janet's free Breakaway Entrepreneur Toolkit. Get it now by going to www.breakawaybusinesscoaching.com forward slash toolkit.